Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 68 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to talk about how you could deal with an image that is really underexposed. Now, I have a couple images here. I have this one and this one. As you can see, they're pretty much terribly underexposed. Now, there are times you do this by accident. You just made a mistake and the image is underexposed. There's other times, though, where you may want to purposely underexpose an image or sometimes overexpose an image. But in this video, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the underexposure part of it. Now, when you underexpose an image on purpose, it's called um, exposing to the left. Sometimes it's called exposing for the highlights. Sometimes I call it exposing for the sky because I expose for the sky. And the reason why you might want to do this is if let's say I properly expose this image, I exposed for the water or the land or the trees back there, the sun would have been pretty much blown out. It wouldn't have had this little kind of star of Bethlehem pattern here. It, and I likely would have got a lot of lens flare. So to avoid that, you kind of <clears throat> cheat a little and you purposely underexpose and you deal with it in post production. Now, the most obvious thing you probably think was just go to the exposure slider and turn that up. Well, if I did and I just turn ex the exposure slider up, well, I, I'm starting to expose properly for the trees, but you could see then I got that blown out problem up there in the sky. So that's not really beneficial. So what you want to do, let's work on this image here, is you want to open up the shadows. But what you might often find is when you open up the shadows, it's not enough. Well, I'm going to show you a couple different tricks you could do to get around that. The first one probably won't work on this image, and it's a little trick that you could do with the graduated filter. Now, typically, a graduated filter would go across the sky, but let's say we want to open up the shadows on the land and water. So we would drag the graduated filter up from the bottom right we do something like that and then we would go to the shadows and open them up and you can see it's not doing a whole lot this image is really bizarre you know really not bizarre but it's really an extreme example but it really doesn't do much over here and it's not doing anything for the trees of course even if I take this and drag it all the way up it's not going to do much there's a little trick and I've covered this in a previous video with the graduated filter what you could do and to better display this little trick i'm just going to turn exposure up so it's more obvious what you would do instead of dragging down from the top or up from the bottom is go to a corner and just get right tight to the corner click with your left mouse button and drag straight out see how it affects the entire image that is really kind of cool don't you think so you could really affect the entire image by doing that so you can mess around with exposure if you so choose and the exposure doesn't seem to be as extreme as the basic panel exposure slider at least all these sliders actually don't seem to be as um, heavy heavy-handed so you could open up shadows and still in this case doesn't do it enough so that's one little trick you could do is you could do this trick with the graduated filter drawn out from the corner. Now, another thing that you could do is forget about the graduated filter. You went to the basic panel, you open the shadows all the way up, is go to the tone curve. Now we're in the point curve right now, and we could go down here in the lower left-hand part of the curve and push up like that, and that will open up the shadows. And you can see it's doing a nice job, and it's still keeping this kind of Star of Bethlehem look to the sun. Now, if it might, well, it might be easier to use the region curve in this case, and you could go right to the shadows and open up the shadows there and open up the darks. Then what I would do is after you opened it up, it looks kind of flat, is you could go to this split, this left-hand split slider, and you could move it around and see if you could uh, just make the image more appealing. And then you could go back to these and move these around a little more. Something like that. So now we opened up the shadows pretty good there. Then you could go on and you could um, you could process the image. I'm going to just do a real quick job. 
you can process the image more like you might want it. So we're going to do that. We're done with the base panel. Typically, I would go to this uh, HSL panel, and I would increase blue saturation, yellow saturation, luminance. I would turn the blue luminance down to make the sky a little darker, turn the yellow up a little bit, try to bring those trees out a little more. And, you know, real quick job. I'd say, you know, well, I'm not done, but that's on my way of being done. And you could see there's the before and there's the after, before, after. And we still have this Star of Bethlehem look of the sun. We don't have any lens flare because I chose to expose to the left, exposed for the highlights. And it, you know, still, we could still process this a lot more and make it a lot more appealing. Now, this image... We could do something similar. I'll just show you. Oops, didn't want to open the brush. Well, um, we'll open up shadows. It's not too bad. But then I would jump right to the tone curve. I think I won't even mess with the graduated um, filter on this one. I would go to the region curve. I would go to the right on that and open up that. Then I'd mess around with this split a little bit like that. Then we could... Um, adjust the rest of it Bring highlights down a little bit adjust my whites and my blacks and add some clarity some vibrance then I jump down to this panel and I would start with saturation and I would increase the yellow saturation the blue saturation a little bit and then bring the blue luminance down and bring the yellow luminance up a little bit kind of makes the grass a little brighter effects down in here a little bit and that's on our way to getting that one done and there is the before and there's the after and you can see them side by side so that's how or at least a couple different ways you could deal with an image that is underexposed now I mentioned at the beginning that there are reasons why you might want to underexpose a shot there are reasons sometimes why you might want to overexpose a shot and i wrote a pretty long article on my website that explains exposing to the left exposing to the right and situations where it might be an advantage to do that so in the description below this video i will have a link to that article that is on my website so i encourage you to check that out so that's it for this episode of Lightroom Quick Tips. I hope that taught you something that you maybe didn't know. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.